lot of my viewers love the LBV-88 Enhanced, and it's for a good reason. Now, they're mostly just talking about the rifleman setup here. Uh, probably not talking about the Grenadier setup, because that was kind of the point of the... Uh, uh, the LBV-88 system was to give options in order to merge Alice with a newer system and maybe help with that transition, whatever. But it ended up being a pretty good concept, the enhanced version. Very modernized, very ergonomic. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and look at setting up this thing and some considerations that you're going to want to have when you're setting them up. So first things first, we need to uh, discuss... You know, what is this thing good at it? Uh, what is this thing good at and what is this thing not good at? Uh, so it is running Alice. So would it be better just to use Alice or is this system really that much better than Alice? Uh, when it, we're talking about versatility, I think this system is more versatile. Um, I would say the weaknesses are in the body armor uh, arena. However, what it does that Alice cannot really do is it, it efficiently allows you to use a pistol. Uh, it pulls up the ammo that would have been on your belt, and it pulls it up onto your chest. Not that there's not interference possibilities, and we're going to talk about that, but it is really good at allowing you to have your combat load in a vehicle and be very slender and stuff. Now, with body armor, if you're going to be wearing body armor with this, uh, you're going to have to do some major adjustments. You're not going to be able to take this thing as it's set up, uh, slick, and then be able to run it with body armor. I mean, you might, but you might have to adjust the belt a little bit or get an extender. And these mag pouches are going to be way off to your sides. It's going to be very awkward to where the only thing you're going to be able to access is stuff on this side with your support hand. Now, that's something that you can change if you're only ever going to run body armor. You can change this around to where all these mag pouches are towards the front, the same as if you were running it slick. So you're not really losing that versatility necessarily, but the ability to swap in and out of different roles, yes, you're losing that ability right there. So really, the you still have modularity with this, but there are some things that are going to stay the same, i.e. these pouches and stuff. And you got to kind of work around how that's set up. Now... Let's go ahead and, uh, and talk about um, how I kind of lay this out. My basic principle for laying this stuff out is I have my fighting side, which would be my left side, which is what my support hand side, and I have my administrative side, which is you know my firing hand side. The reason why I have these set up is this is the area that I'm going to access the most in a fight. My support hand reaches for magazines. My support hand reaches for anything that I would need to get if I need to hold on to my rifle. So I have this stuff, which is administrative stuff. I have time to set down my rifle. I can set this. I can uh, access this side with my firing hand, and I'm good to go. So that's why I call it my fighting and my mid administrative side. Everything that I do, I set up with that in mind. So what's this area? Well, I would say it's an IFAC area. Put it on the belt. Use the Alice IFAC, get an IFAC insert. So just Google that IFAC insert. You'll probably find it on Sportsman's for five bucks. Put all your stuff in the IFAC insert, put that inside here. Do not get the plastic ones. I'm talking about the soft ones, maybe the gray ones that are like five bucks these days. The uh, little things that fold out, the T. Uh, the T inserts or whatever. Put a little lanyard on them with boot lace and, you know, just wrap it around. Not like a lanyard to this thing, but like a handle. And, you know, simple. You have your eye fact there. Um, another thing that makes this so versatile is I can actually fit a cat tourniquet in a, a grenade pouch, but I can also fit a 4-inch Elias bandage, so I have good enough med for a very quick get-up. So that's really nice. So... Obviously, if I was in a fight, I'd want to keep hold of my rifle if I could, if my support side isn't hurt or anything, and I don't have to let go of my rifle. I can access my tourniquet here, and I can get my tourniquet ready while I'm providing cover for myself, because the most important thing is, you know, win the fight or fight your way to cover, and then treat yourself with the tourniquet. But tourniquets first before bandages or, you know, packing wounds or whatever. But, <clears throat> anyways... Uh, now let's go ahead and talk about some of the setups and where we're going to really start 
looking at some interference possibilities. The first thing I'm going to talk about is my Minuteman setup. My Minuteman setup is very simple. I talked about having the tourniquet here and, a, and an Olaus here on my administrative side. Uh, that would not change. Now, I would have my dump pouch right here bef between uh, the very end uh, little uh, buckle attachment or belt attachment and the the second from the front, the one right behind the grenade pouch. And then I would have a pistol mag just in front of the uh, grenade pouch. So I would have six rounds or six magazines. Uh, I would have my med, I would have my dump pouch, and I would have my uh, pistol ammo. Uh, on this side, I can run, if I wanted to, I could run a canteen uh, if I wanted to, or I could run a like a camelback or something. I haven't really decided that, but typically if I have to get up and go in a minute, I'm probably not going to be doing much of drinking water. Uh, so this side would stay empty. It allows me to use my pistol that's on my belt because if I need to grab this and go, then I'm, it, things have probably gotten to the point in society to where I'm strapped all the time anyways. So I've got, I got my pistol on my belt anyways, so, you know, there you go, and I'm grabbing a rifle, so I've got six mags. I'm only going to take one mag pouch because, hey, if I need to do a reload, there's a problem. Um, and I probably need to do something else than duke it out with a, with a pistol when I have so much rifle ammo, right? So, that's my mindset with that. There's other setups, too, like a CQB setup would be very similar to that, but more pistol ammo. So, I would probably move this uh, dump pouch more forward. Uh, kind of straddling the grenade pouch and then moving my uh, pistol mag pouches right here. Now, if you wanted to, you can actually move uh, like two pistol mag, uh, uh, like a double mag pouch forward of the grenade. Just adjust your belt a little bit uh, to, you know, favor this side and keep your uh, dump pouch where it is and then or you could take your dump pouch and move it and add in an extra ammo source here. Now, I would use the Alice house pouch and keep the grenade flat because guess what? These little hooks here work perfectly with the Alice um, uh, mag pouches. So there you go. You're, you have your way of taking care of two things in one and saving yourself space. The one thing I would say to be aware of is if you're going to be using this, try to not let it let this pouch or uh, this pouch be interfered with these this pouch right here because this is uh, something that I see a lot is when I was setting stuff up I would have uh, this set up um, like here and it would actually interfere. I wasn't able to actually load mags into this pouch because this fully loaded one was right here. I actually had to scoot it back to these last uh, to the middle of these last two which vertically it would put it underneath the top one here so it had enough vertical clearance to where I could actually access this whether this one was loaded or not and whether this one was loaded or not. So you got to keep that in mind. That's what the interference principle that I'm talking about here that you got to keep in mind. So it's a very simple concept. Some people would say, hey, uh, ditch this and just go with like a saw pouch so you can carry six mags. That's not a bad idea. Um, and that would go good with like a recon setup. Um, but before we get into that, I'll just finish the CQB setup. So the CQB setup, you might want a canteen. So in that case, the only thing I would really have on this side would be, you know, a canteen. I would move my... Uh, I would keep my tourniquet on this side. I would move my Olaus into an IFAC and it would be back here. I would have an extra source of ammunition and a dump pouch and I would probably have a pistol ammo here. Uh, if I wish to run a pistol, then I would just have to move this canteen back a little bit more and I could still access my pistol with this amount of room right here. But it's something that I would have to toy with a bit. So that's... That would be like a CQB setup. Is there going to be some interference? Yes, the possibility of having interference with this canteen is uh, relatively high, so you might just want to go without it and probably take a trimmed ammo pouch and have that as a backup uh, for extra ammo if you're going to be doing a lot of CQB or whatever. 
Now let's talk about a recon setup where the saw pouch would actually come in handy. So when it comes to recon, you probably do want, uh, you're probably going to have uh, a backpack or a ruck or whatever. You can still have your IFAC on the back here. I would still recommend having a tourniquet, but I would also load this up with like a monocular or something like that. Something that you'll have to use in the field, but not necessarily right away. You could also run, you could also, you know, keep your Oleus in there or whatever, or some kind of uh, bandage or something like that. So keep medical in that area. Uh, for this, I would still run the ammo pouch in this area, and I would attach my dump pouch there. That really wouldn't change across the different spectrums. Uh, it would be my way of carrying extra ammunition on recon. You're probably going to want more ammo, and you know, you're probably not going to want to run a pistol, especially out in the field, unless it's something that's stashed. So, uh, I'm going to want to access some ammo right away, so that's where this would come in. I only see the saw pouch as being a way of replenishing ammo, so it would be an administrative task. I would drink water out of my ruck, and and if I had to E and E, then I have to E and E, and I have to prioritize that. Having a canteen on hand isn't going to help me much with E and E. But uh, with that said, that would be like a recon loadout. You're maxing out the amount of ammo here. You have nine magazines on here, and you have six here, so you have a total of like 15 magazines available for you to use. Realistically, you could, you know, kind of strain for uh, strain for room. You could attach the dump pouch to this right here on the saw pouch, and you're kind of forcing it to work a little bit, or you can move it forward here, which is totally possible, and you could just run a saw pouch more towards the rear here as a secondary way of replenishing, but if you're on a recon patrol and you need that much ammo, you're probably going to have to access some of these pouches before you actually get a chance to replenish. So think about that concept and definitely train with it, but whatever pouches you're putting on here, try out your setup, load them up, you know, put mags in here, put medical in here, and actually try to access some of this stuff. Bend side to side, bend forward, bend back, get, out, get in the prone, get out of prone, get in the vehicle, get out of vehicle, whatever you're going to do, replicate that action, make sure that everything fits the way it's supposed to, and make adjustments as needed. But Overall, that's my recommendation for setting up the LBV-88 in a way that's going to, you know, help you be more successful in your usage of this because it, it's not outdated, it's not that archaic. Uh, it is still very useful, it is still very ergonomic, and if need be, if you don't see any purpose for these grenade pouches, then just, you know, undo the stitching here and take them off, and you can actually fit, you can easily fit these ammo pouches right here perfectly where the grenade pouches are. If you really needed that for like recon, run two saw pouches, ammo pouches here, it's just gonna get heavy. But you know what? It's on you. This is your this is your Barbie doll to dress up here. So for all you tactical guys, this is your tactical Barbie doll. So, you know, have fun with that. Let me know what you think in the comments below, any kind of configurations that you guys have and uh, are dreaming up and uh, you guys have a good one.